Good evening, everybody. Welcome to The Rebirth. I am your host, Shay Marriott, and joining me tonight is my... Hey, it's your boy, Eli Isabel, a.k.a. The South Got Something to Say. Shay. What's good? Happy Monday. Happy Monday. What's going on, Shay Marriott? Listen, I'm, I'm, listen we, I had to cancel last Monday, y'all. I was so exhausted and drained. I have never canceled a Rebirth show. <laughs> so I'm happy to be back, and um, it's a Monday... And is, is this the last? No, we got one more day before the last day, right? One more day for the last day, and then it'll be September. And you know what September is? Your birthday month? Yes, yes, Virgo season. <laughs> oh, yes, boy. Yes, oh, boy. Yes, yes, Oh, boy. What does that mean for the rest of the world? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean what it means for the rest of the world? It's a holiday. Should we be prepared to receive the Virgo? Absolutely. Virgos? How does that work out? Yes, you should be prepared to receive what the Virgos. What do we need to know? We are good people. Virgos what do we need people. to know? Well, what we need to know right now is make sure you follow us on all social <laughs> media. <laughs> Philly Jams 95.3 and also at, at Rebirth, Rebirth underscore radio. Make sure you follow us on Instagram. Welcome to the Rebirth, everybody. Yes. We have a great show prepared for you tonight. Before we get into our right here, right now, we usually don't introduce our guests until after that. But we're mm-hmm. going to introduce her in the beginning because number one she's so fabulous number two all she's right all right she's beautiful she's my right, friend right. my sister girl all right all right <laughs> <laughs> and she has an amazing conference coming up and plus we want her input on the right here right now that and we, we have got her good today. side right there right? and we got her good side <laughs> so everybody please welcome pastor delisa lewis to the rebirth again she is a friend thank to the show hey you. welcome to the show <laughs> i feel so welcome yes <laughs> Welcome back. Yes. Thank you. And yes. I promise you, Eli going to be good. He going to cool. be good. See, <laughs> you're a repeat <laughs> offender now, so I don't bother you the second time around. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. How are you? I'm outstanding. Good. I'm so excited about what God is doing, what mm-hmm. we're doing, what you guys are doing. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Yes, yes. It's it's been it's been a busy busy year it's been a busy summer yo where did the summer go (laughs) where did it go (laughs) out of here (laughs) i felt like it was just june 28th yeah (laughs) yeah it's it's august 28th (laughs) what is going on it's yeah it just totally went by so yeah so we're excited to have you and we got so much to talk about we do we do we have a lot to talk about um so First of all, I got to give a shout out to all the kids that started school today. I know not everybody didn't go back, but some kids did go back. So happy first day of school to those that did go back. Have a blessed year. Yeah. Let's get them grades. Yes. And you know, this is my, um, this is Xavier's last year. He graduates this year. Yes. That just don't seem right. Yes. I'm sorry. (laughs) Yes. He graduates. Yeah. And I took, um. My youngest, he just turned 16 mm-hmm. on the 21st. And mon- that mon- next day, we went and got his license. Mm. So I'm just like, this is crazy. Like, I don't have any more babies. Two cars. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> two college tuitions. Yes. Yeah. Two so. car insurances. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, enough, enough, enough. I'm not trying to depress <laughs> you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations enough, enough. to the boys. Yeah. 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 Yes. yeah. 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 Yep. So, uh, yeah, thank um, you so much. They are, they're so, they're good looking boys. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Know, you. Girl, you know how many listen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I've been blessed because they are so great. They are, they're really, they don't give me no trouble. So, I'm really blessed in that area. Yeah. They are. They're very respectful yes, boys from yes. day one. Yeah. Did so your yeah. daughter start back school yet? Not. Tomorrow's the first day. Oh. I think tomorrow will be the last time I actually, I, uh, since she's been in this world, I've taken her to school every first day oh. from K through 10. So I'm, she's saying, well, you know, next year I probably have a car. I'm like, what you say? <laughs> <laughs> so this technically might be my last year driving her to Aww. school. That's a little weird for me to think about that. You I was like, you feel a little... I don't feel old, no, so don't no, say that. No, I was going to say sad. <laughs> you feel a little sad? I'm a little sentimental about the yeah. cheering, you know, how I get. But anyway. Aw. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so she, she, we, we roll out tomorrow morning. Nice. Year 10. Well, congratulations, yes. Haley, and have yes. a great first day tomorrow. She's yes. an amazing, she's an amazing young lady as well. Thank so. you. She comes from good stock. I have yeah. to really say that. Yeah. Oh. 
Priscilla did a great <laughs> job. <laughs> <laughs> did a great job. Yeah. I said it real calm, so y'all right, didn't catch right. me. I guess y'all caught you. it, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. So once again, welcome to The Rebirth on Philly Jams 95.3. Again, make sure you uh, follow us wherever you get your social media. I mean, wherever you get your podcast, <laughs> you can find The Rebirth. And if you would like to join the conversation tonight, please give us a call at 267-908-3166. And again, that's 267-908-3166. So we are going to get into right here, right now. Woof. And we have, we actually have our screen back now. This is a good one yeah. here. Yeah. I saw it. So you want to give the Look uh, at you over there. description there of what's going on? Oh, wow. Okay. So, woo child. So parents <laughs> call out New Jersey <laughs> teacher <laughs> with a voluptuous body. So this young lady is apparently getting a lot of uh, pushback due to the way she dresses. She is... She is um curvy. <laughs> she's very curvy. <laughs> Let me look over here. So <laughs> she's very curvy. So there are some issues with some of uh, you know the people in the school district that have some issues with her and the way she's dressing mm -hmm. uh, in the school. So I guess we want let's jump into this. Is and she has a large Instagram following. Uh, so and that's how that's how she uh, it came to light. Someone saw her on social media and isn't that Miss Goodbody? And <laughs> So she now she's now in the news. So let's I don't know if people mm -hmm. can they see it on the screens online? Yeah. Okay. Yep, they can so see let, it. let's let's talk about this young lady right here. Is this appropriate or not? So uh, so I, I because she is curvy, it doesn't matter what she wears. Because right there she's she's dressed in regular clothes, but because she's so curvy, it doesn't matter what she puts on, you're still mm -hmm. gonna see her her body, her figure, right? So now the I think the kids, It's a, she's an elementary. Yeah. So the kids are very young. So some people were saying, actually, they have a video of her talking. And she was just like, what are you guys thinking about? She was like, these kids are young. They're not thinking like that. They're not looking at me thinking those type of things. Yeah. They're really, really young kids. I think it's third grade that she teaches. Mm -hmm. Right? So this is what she was saying. <laughs> um, and she also said that, surprisingly, a lot of the mothers <laughs> – I can't Those wait. are probably the primary haters. No, she said, surprisingly, a lot of the mothers support her. Oh, okay, okay. She said it's the men that really? are really coming at her and saying some really, and she said and it's not sexual things that they're saying. It's like really mean things that they're saying. Wow. Yeah, she said, I'm but surprised. the majority of the mothers of the kids at that school are supporting her and coming to her, you know, her defense. So, <laughs> Delisa, I would love to hear. What you have to say about this young lady and her curvaceous. Well, first of all, she is curvy. Mm -hmm. um, and what she puts on, it, she's going to be curvy. Mm -hmm. Right. The reality is everything that I've seen, she's covered. Mm -hmm. Okay? So the fact that she's curvy, if she were 300 pounds, would we be having this conversation? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, the other thing is. The men have to say that because they got right. <laughs> so the wife, the wife is cool with it because as long as the husband is just talking, right, about right, it, it's all good. Right? But at the parent teacher conference, when the brothers huddled up, they over there being honest with each other. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, I, I think that if nothing else, it creates a dialogue that you should have with your child. Yeah. Right. Now let me tell you, I have grandchildren. And my three-year-old, I mean, my, my third grader, he knows cute. Oh, yeah. He okay. He knows cute. So to, to say that he wouldn't be looking at her, it may not be the body in and of itself. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But he, he knows what he's attracted <coughs> to Okay. As, as a third grader. So, um, you know, but I think if she's, if she's teaching and the kids are focused and, you know, I, what are you supposed to say? So, how would you feel if your your grandchild was in that class? I would be like, wow, well, okay, yeah. <laughs> 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 at, the, at the end of the day, it's a dialogue that you have to yeah, have. Yeah. It's about keeping your child focused mm -hmm. regardless. But if, if she's teaching and they're learning, and mm -hmm. let me say, it may help some children learn. They come to school, I bet you that. Right. I bet you that. <laughs> I bet you he pays attention in that class. Um, <laughs> you know, so 
Yeah. It, it just creates style. I think to be mean, I think, is unwarranted. It's right. right. I mean, her body, it is her body. We. It's amazing to me how this society w- takes that position that everybody has control of their own body. Mm-hmm. But then when it offends you, mm-hmm. right. you want to be so vocal about exactly. it. Exactly. And I'm just like, let, uh, let her be. Mm-hmm. And you know what I say? Oh, go ahead. So what would that dialogue sound like? <laughs> Did I just hit the... <laughs> <laughs> no one's hitting her in here, y'all. Okay. <laughs> Eli just pushed my head into the mic. <laughs> What, what, I mean, how would that go? Like, what would that conversation, how do you even start that conversation? I, I think you would ask your child if they even notice. Because if they don't, why bring it up? Right, mm-hmm. right. Now, if you, they come home saying, Mommy, she, you know, I can't focus, then you might need to change teachers. But, mm-hmm. but like you said, if she was 400 pounds yep. and... It, it it could be so maybe somebody would complain about that. That's mm-hmm. right. Oh well, she can't get around well enough. She can't interact with the kids. The kids look bored because mm-hmm. she's not as active. So mm-hmm. it doesn't really matter. My my old director once said that at my at my current job, she said, you know what? If we give all of these people a million dollars, it'll be somebody in here complaining about why we didn't get a million. Dollars. Absolutely. So it doesn't matter how a person looks, how big or how small or how curvy. Somebody's gonna have something to say anyway. Mm-hmm. And I will say this: What about all of this? Um, positive body self image that women are like that we push like that the women should be feel good about whether you're curvy whether you're thick whether you're s- slim mm-hmm. like you should feel good about how you look you know what i mean that's right that, that doesn't happen now if she was in the seventh grade or tenth graders teaching that would be a whole problem i'm gonna say because these boys today are they off the hook but elementary school i, I don't think she should get a hard time if she's a good teacher she's a good teacher i just know that miss jeter my third grade teacher did Didn't not look, look like that <laughs> And she's still alive. I think she's like 80 now. And I hope she's not listening. She was cute. I recognize her cuteness. But she was already like 50 when I was in the third grade. I didn't have no 25-year-old teachers when I was in school. They was all seasoned already. So I'm just saying, like, woo, child. Yeah. But, yeah, let, leave, leave her alone. Let her be great. And the men hating, that's fake hate. That's, that's fake hate. I swear I, to I, you. I believe that. They I'm on her Instagram page. They might not follow. <laughs> <laughs> but they are watching this sister right here. They, that's fake hate. You, like you said, you, what you going to say? Right. My son, third grade teacher, bad. <laughs> Who you going to say that to? Exactly. Yeah, that's fake hate right there. Let her be great. That's, that's hilarious. What I'm saying it's fake hate. I know it. I fake hate sometimes. Like, she's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> but in my head, I'm like, yo, wait. <laughs> All men do it. It's just you what know? it is. Yo, yo man do it. Yo man do it. <laughs> We, she's a mess. He don't do it. Golly. He's like, hey, why she what? doing that to me? Why she doing that to me? I'm like, she doing that to you, huh? Okay. That's what I'm saying. We start, yeah, like, she knows she just take that off. She's like, <laughs> got look so walking around here looking at a hot mess in that little outfit. Get your, your mama ought to be ashamed. But it aside. <laughs> Oh my goodness, he ain't got no sense. I'm just saying, no just keep sense. it real. Allow me. <laughs> okay. Well, do you have a uh, Black History moment? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> so we do a Black History moment every week. Um, first, we were doing it just for the month of February, but we was like, no, nah, let's keep this going. So yeah. All right. So tonight, y'all, our Black History moment, we're gonna mm-hmm. talk about. Miss Phyllis Wheatley. I don't know if you guys are aware of who she is, but for those of you no. who are not, <laughs> let me go into my, ro- my radio voice. For those of you who are not, <laughs> she, was ta- she was taken from her home in Africa when she was seven or eight and sold to the Wheatley family in Boston, Mass. The family taught her to read and write and encouraged her to write poetry. And as soon as they witnessed her talent for it, in, in 1773, Phyllis published her first poem, making her the first African-American to be published, and she was only 12 at the time. Oh Shout wow. out to Miss Phyllis Wheatley. And I guess we got to give these white folks her, 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 her mass on them a little credit because they taught her to read and write. Mm. So shout out to the Wheatley family, I think. <laughs> um, but however. <laughs> They're not all bad. <laughs> They're not all I mean, you own a whole human being. You're not great. <laughs> <laughs> Just going to say that for the record. <laughs> however, they, in in it. <laughs> In, in, in the time that it was, as my mom would say, they did right by her. 
<laughs> so they did, right? She was the first African American to be published in 1773. So shout out and 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 rest in peace. I think I can safely say rest in peace to Miss Phyllis Wheatley. Okay. All right. All right. Look at you. Little known black history fact. Mm. On the job. That's Good job. I Good job. Do. If you're just tuning in, you are listening to The Rebirth on Philly Jams 95.3 FM. And we have Pastor Delisa Lewis is in the house. So once again, welcome, welcome, welcome. You. Yes, yes, you are here, you are here. Yes. And you got some, you got, you have a lot of stuff going on. Oh my goodness, yes. I am so excited about mm -hmm. what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, September the 24th, I have the Wives That Win Boot Yes, camp yes, yes. All right, let's yes. go. Look at that. Camp. Look at that let's beautiful go. picture. Let's go. <laughs> 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 Can't get no, no sound effect for that. Okay. There we go. <laughs> September 24th, 10 a.m. Yeah. to 2 p.m. Yeah. So so tell us a little bit about this. Wives That Win Boot Camp. So tell us a little bit about how did you, how did you start this? Where did this idea come from? We'll start there. Well, actually, uh, it started from we had a marriages that win boot camp mm -hmm. some years ago, and I I like the idea of the boot camp because what is boot camp? You know, I thought about the military, and I'm like, you need to change the perspective, mm -hmm. change change the ideology of what society has gotten us to believe a wife should be, mm. and so. We had to come up with this this boot camp. It's an intensive learning okay. in which you are challenged to change the perspective and ideology of what you've been ingrained with growing up as to how a wife should be. Mm. Please speak on this. <laughs> Please speak on this because I, I actually talk about this in therapy mm -hmm. with some of my clients. Mm -hmm. So let's start with the society mm -hmm. part. What, how does society, what, what are we supposed to be as wives based on society's expectations? Well, society has you believing you're your own unique do you woman. Mm -hmm. um, a, a man is supposed to just uh, be something that provides for you when convenient. Mm. Say it you know, again. But because we talk about this independence. I want to do what I want to do. I want to be what I want to be. It's my money. I make it. Mm -hmm. You know, everything is about me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, where did you get that, that thought process as it relates to being a wife? You can't, you can't change the parameters or the criteria of a wife because you weren't the one who created the institution of marriage. Mm -hmm. So since you didn't create it, then you don't get to redefine it. Right. And right. so they're redefining it because, uh, l let me say it this way. You know how sometimes we talk about people dumbing things down? Right. Well, that's what's happened with wives. See, okay. We've dumbed them down as opposed to lifting them up because if we dumb down the responsibilities, if we dumb down the criteria, if we dumb down what a wife is supposed to be, then anybody could be it. Mm. Mm. If we dumb down we what a wife is supposed to be, mm -hmm. then anybody can be it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Sort of like what happened in hip-hop. Everybody's a rapper now. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> No it's been dumbed down. Yeah. Everybody's good, a rapper. Yeah, that but was it's good. It's, but it's, it's just like <laughs> the analogy works. <laughs> yes. Because it wouldn't one million rappers back in the day. Exactly. So that's let me, true. Let me let me ask you this. So do you think that? So you said how women have the attitude. Not all women. Some women have right. the attitude no. of yeah. I want to be clear. I don't want no troubles. <laughs> um, how some this is you know this is my money. I'm independent. I'm this and that. Mm -hmm. Do you think that mentality comes from being taught by other single women? Yes. You know what I mean? Yes, definitely. But when you look at those that have taught that, what's the success rate? Mm. Right. Yeah. Because women who have been, and when I say married, happily married, I'm talking about really happily. I'm not talking about being married just because you have nowhere else to go <laughs> or you have no money of your own. Right. I'm talking about women who have been happily married for years understand that there's a level of independence you give up mm -hmm. when you enter into covenant. Mm. You can't, I'm not, I, Delisa is not just Delisa. What I do reflects on my husband. Right. Mm -hmm. We're one. If he doesn't have, I heard somebody say today, it was funny. She said um, <laughs> her husband, uh, he, he bought 
himself a car. And she couldn't understand when she saw his car payment, she just about floored herself. Mm. And I said, his car payment. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't your money, too? <laughs> it comes out of, what, even if you have separate accounts, it, it impacts you. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, his car payment. Oh, so he got car payment he didn't talk to you about? <laughs> I hear a lot of people, see, I hear a lot of people that are like, especially younger people, I'm going to say younger meaning, I'm going to say 40 and under. Mm -hmm. Like, there is no, he has his money, I have my money, he pays this, I pay that. Mm -hmm. And I, and I'm, and I, I don't know, for me, so I'll do a personal disclosure, so I don't do all of that right there. Mm -hmm. The money goes into one pot. Mm -hmm. Bills get paid. Mm -hmm. Money saved over here. Right. Our money saved over here for whatever we need it for. Right. Money saved over here from when we older, mm -hmm. and then we go on about our day. But then, but I constantly hear people say, "You got a joint account? Like who, you don't have one?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> now, so, and I know most women have their little side account over there. Mm -hmm. Cool, do your thing. Uh, but it's like there is no like how are the bills split up? Like you pay this, I pay that. To me, that's too much to think about all the time. Just pay the damn bills. It is. Like <laughs> I don't want to be dealing with all that. Okay, it's your turn to pay the light bill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't got time for that. Now, how you split it up? Some people, it's easier for others. Whatever works for your household. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, the thought should be, all of it belongs to all of you. Right, right. It, it, it's I not agree. even hers. I don't care how many accounts you have. You, he can have eight savings accounts. That all belongs to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think women be thinking that on the other side. Right. <laughs> Those eight belong to Boo, too. <laughs> no, it belongs to me. Do you think, so, I'm sorry, do you think that, no, here, you're fine. here's my perception, and help me out here, and just from talking to my friends and different people, right, mm -hmm. when we talk about being married, it seems like uh, in marriages, the man's happiness is on the back burner. It's always about, y'all, you even got the little, the little rhyme, happy wife, happy life. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, whatever, the, the man's happiness within this union is always on the back burner. It's always about making sure the women are straight. Mm -hmm. Do you, w what do you think? Can you lend some, some feedback or some conversation to that? <laughs> it's ludicrous. It's ludicrous. I, I agree too. It is. Talk to these I women. Don't, I don't understand <laughs> happy, the only person who needs to be happy is the wife. And let me say this. There's no promise in the Bible that talks about you being happy. Either one of you. Mm. So that's not what this is about. But when you sow into someone you reap that, mm. that that's just a given that's a principle that doesn't change so in order for me to to reap i sow i make sure his needs are met right i'm his biggest cheerleader nobody's gonna cheer him on no more than me his needs are my needs whatever he wants i i make it happen all right and so because of that my car went down, the car that I drive, let me say it that way, the car that I draw, drive went down, I said, oh, I, I want this. He went out and got it. Right. And and I don't think, that that's just common mm -hmm. sense to me. That's about being together with somebody, right? right? Mm -hmm. It's about what are you building? But when you build, it's mine, it's yours, it's, it's all this separation, you gonna, you're going to have separation. Right. So, you know, it, his needs are my needs. If his need is not met, then my need is not met. That's a very selfless that's, attitude. That's deep that, right that there. is deep. That's deep. I can't be happy and he and his I know that I haven't met his needs. Right. Right. How that work? Please say that stuff when you in your conference. <laughs> <laughs> Save this. Write that down, Shay. So do she that. won't forget. <laughs> about, about the book for November 5th. <laughs> All the women around the world need to hear this right here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and see, what I have to say isn't popular. But right. I'm not here to be popular. Especially now. I'm on assignment. And the thing is, we have seen how society has gone downhill because mm -hmm. the family has gone downhill mm -hmm. because everybody wants to do it their way. Right. And if you do it the way it was created to do, everybody wins. That's the thing I, you don't, you know, you, you're not sacrificing to never get on the back end. Everybody wins when right. you do it the way it's supposed to be done, selflessly. Mm. So my initial, my initial question was how does society 
say that wives are supposed to do? And you you answer that. So when they're coming to this boot camp, what are you guys going to be? Well, you, what are you going to be? Um, how how will you reframe what their perspective is a wife supposed to be to what it should be or what it should look like? Well, we have to. Ad- First of all, they have to address, and it is boot camp, so we mm-hmm. have to address what they thought it was originally, and then we have to we have to challenge that mm-hmm. with who told you that, mm. who, who who gave you that criteria, mm-hmm. and where did they become the one who could give you the criteria, mm-hmm. and so from there, then it's like no, we have to rethink, we have to re- reshape the thinking by talking about what it's really supposed to be. Mm -hmm. I didn't make it up. I didn't write it. I just understood it and applied it, and now I reap the benefit of it all. Right. So that's why I can talk from a place of this is what I live, and this is how it worked for me. Mm -hmm. I don't talk in theory. I don't have to, I don't have to, um, (laughs) I don't have to prove it to you Mm -hmm. because I have the proof. Right, right. You know, and so it's, it's just interesting how, have to talk we we have to really get to what created those thoughts and ideas in the first place a lot of things they saw growing up yeah it was never even talked about it was just what they saw right you know you right. see you see d- a dad come and go mm-hmm. you see a dad not working you see a wife not submitting then you think that it's fine for you not to submit mm-hmm. you see you see the fighting the bickering there doesn't have to be bickering and fighting in the household. Right. There doesn't have to be cu- you don't cuss each other out where mm-hmm. that comes from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You talk about you love somebody. You don't you it's amazing. Your boy can do something. You'll never cuss him out. Mm-hmm. But you're gonna cuss your wife out or you're gonna cuss your husband out. Mm-hmm. Where, where we get that from? Yeah. And then think, oh, what? Did I, I didn't mean to. Psych. Right. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Right. And then be like, well, you, uh, baby, you know I love you. What? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You get what you say. Yeah. If you call her a B, then a B is what she'll be. Mm. Mm. If you call him lazy, lazy is what they'll what be. He'll be. Yeah. If you call him disrespectful and unfaithful, that's what he'll be. Yeah. And so we have to understand that we do have authority. Mm-hmm. You have the authority to make your marriage whatever you want it to be. And you have so much authority that he may not even want it at the time. Mm. And, he, and he will still end up submitting. But you got to know that you walk in that authority. Right. You know, it's, it's a building up of who you really are and not what people have told you. And, and so really embracing the, the woman that you are. I, I don't think most women do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They, absolutely. Well, no, no, absolutely not. Because a, a lot of a lot of women, um, number one, again, the identity of who you are, you know, is definitely. Um, I mean, y- right now, social media kind of dictates so much, yes. you know. Yes. And I really feel bad for the the young girls that are coming up because I didn't grow up in a world of social media, right? right? right. Um, but the younger girls, you know, they they are and. I mean, that's all they see, mm-hmm. and that's what they think they're supposed to be, right. you know, or supposed to do or supposed to look like, mm-hmm. you know, which is really, really sad. When I was growing up, it was it was the, um, the inner beauty. racism mm-hmm. with light skin, dark skin. So yeah. that's what we, light skin, dark skin, good hair, bad hair, whatever yeah. that, right? Yeah. But now it's just like, you know, I young girls are getting, like, dress jobs, um, getting her butts done at yeah. a very, very early age yeah. because of what they're seeing on social media, right. right? So when someone says, well, you gotta, you have to know who you are, a lot of people do not no. know who they are. Nope. And let's not add the trauma that comes along with whatever you went through, right. you know, whatever was said to you and, and whatever you experienced, now you gotta add that on, yes. right? you know, yes. and then... I have I always say that black women, period, is the most disrespected, unappreciated in the world to me. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I just I just think that even with even with our own mm-hmm. our own men, mm-hmm. you know, they down us. 
you know. So I, I think that a lot of women are trying to find their identity and rebuild and, and get themselves together. But they have to be careful not to create it out from outside. Yeah, in yeah. And create it from inside out because the big butt ain't going to hold them. Mm-hmm. The big breast ain't going to hold them. If, look, I, I say this all the time. If Halle Berry can't keep going. <laughs> <laughs> That's real talk. Because it's, it's, not, it's not about that. Yeah. That's not what we, it, it's not who you are. It'll mm-hmm. get them. It'll, it'll get, get their attention. It'll bring it the boys it, to the yard. It'll get the attention. All the attention you want. Mm-hmm. But it, it definitely won't. I, this makes me think about, think about all of the, not all of them, but some of the really pretty girls in high school, right? Mm-hmm. They got all the attention from boys. A lot of them ended up with a bunch of kids early because you got all the attention all the time. And all of the dudes wanted you. And if you didn't have the discipline to be like, if you didn't get that structure, if you didn't get that love from your father or whoever, whatever that male figure was in your life, you took all of that attention from all those different guys because they all liked you. Mm-hmm. And sometimes those girls ended up with three or four kids by the 10-year class reunion. Because yeah. like it's almost like being too fine is a curse. She can, she sure can. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mean that in a disrespectful But I diverse. Way. I'm going to be quiet. <laughs> Go ahead. Is she about to chop my head off? I, I, when, you, when you're I too remember, fine. I remember, <laughs> I remember there was a time, and Shay, did, Shay was there. I was not liked. I was not liked. Mm-mm. And not I, at I all. have to say. By, by like people, like girls? Other? By, mostly by girls. But okay. And, and I would have to say that. They I had a reason. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> they had a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Why they ain't like you? Why they ain't like you? Let's talk about it. Uh, <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I, all kind of things is coming through my head right now. Like we, <laughs> like where? What, what do I say? Now? Give us one. <laughs> no, th- because at that time, I enjoyed the attention right. of guys. Okay. And guys were giving it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I took it. So you was that girl I was just talking about, that fine. <laughs> she was yeah, yes, yeah, but the very thing beautiful. was, let me say this, but I was also very lonely. Okay. Um, because there's a lot of assumptions made. Mm-hmm. But even the pretty girl has a heart. Absolutely. The pretty girl mm-hmm. has feelings. She g- what ends up happening is she gets this attention and she uses that attention to make her feel better about herself, mm-hmm. but it's momentary. Yes. Right? It doesn't last. And so that's why she'll end up going from this one to this one to this one. Mm-hmm. And people are like, she's, oh, she's a hoe. Well, no, she's looking for something. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it can be misunderstood. And I was misunderstood. misunderstood. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but um, <laughs> you had to knuckle up a few times. No, we ain't have to go there. Woo. <laughs> once, Woo. Once, once or twice. I, I don't think I was around. Can Shay fight? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I could fight. So it don't strike I choose me. not to. So you got hands? Because I, I black out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You do? Yeah, I black out. <laughs> but it's 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 unfortunate because sometimes the pretty girl really is the lonely girl. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is the lonely girl because so many assumptions are made and it's really not fair. Right. It's really not. But you but you develop some thick skin. And you figure it out. And you move on. Right. <laughs> and you let that be their issue. Yeah. Mm. yeah. All right now. So what can people expect? Like, first of all, who is this for? Okay. This is for me. I did one a master class for wives only. Mm-hmm. But this one I opened up because, as my husband says, you got to be the thing before you can be the thing. Yes. Mm. Yes. And yes. so in order to be, you you want to mm-hmm. be found as a wife. Mm-hmm. You don't want to have to become a wife in the marriage, right? Because it, it, wow. it, you know, there's a lot of hurt and, and disappointment and, and things that go on when you have to become it mm-hmm. in it. So it's best to be it before you become it, right? So I um, agree with that. We have. <laughs> you're ready, I, you I got a question. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so you so I'll put you in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I raised my hand. <laughs> so it's about becoming, because the Bible says when a man finds a wife finds a good thing. So he has to find you as a wife. Right. Mm-hmm. May I? <laughs> <laughs> so how does a woman begin to prepare to be a wife? The best <coughs> way she can prepare to be a wife is, first of all, she has to know herself. Mm-hmm. She has to become whole by herself. Mm-hmm. 
She has to be able to be self-sufficient. She has to have her own money. She has to have her own, you know, she she has to know who she is, know what she wants, know what she doesn't (laughs) want before she can even think about becoming somebody's Mm -hmm. wife. She has to be able to take care of issues and challenges, and she's got to be strong-willed and strong-minded. You know, she can't be tossed to and fro every time somebody comes tickling her ears. She yeah. just go with the flow. Mm-hmm. You know, she's got she's got to go after her dreams, her desires, know what they are. You better preach. All right. Yeah. So I, I had a I had a, a I, I know a person who got <laughs> married mm-hmm. a while back. It's <laughs> 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 okay. Go ahead and talk about your friend. No, I don't. I didn't say it was my friend. I know a I know a person who knew a person. <laughs> There's put some separation in between it. Come on, Pastor, don't do me like that. <laughs> but um, dang, y'all made me forget my point. Oh, oh, um, so they were going to marriage counseling, uh-huh. and after session after session, he was like, "I'm not marrying y'all. Like y'all are not ready." Right. Mm-hmm. And as much as they wanted it, mm-hmm. he wouldn't do it. I mean, they ended up getting married anyway. They went somewhere else. Mm-hmm. However, so have you? Do you do weddings? Have you married people before? Yes. Well, my husband has. Your husband. So when you, w- is there is there a time where he's like, they're not ready? Mm-hmm. You know, and you will not discourage it, but how do you how do you get that couple to the point where they are ready to be married? Well, what you do is, it's, it's about communication. It's about getting them to see the differences. And sometimes they're going to do what they want to do. Most people do what they want to do regardless. Mm-hmm. So the... Our job is to really just put as much on the table as possible, right. the, the good and the bad, and then let them make the decision. Because at the end of the day, you can tell them they're not ready. They're going to anyway. But what you can do is just continue to counsel and coach them. Because right. we, we do that with a lot of our couples. They tell us after the wedding they don't want to stop coaching. So mm-hmm. they continue to coach, and so we're able to continue to guide. But we don't ever put our desires on them. We just let them work it out, whatever it is. We tell them, talk about it. Mm-hmm. Come up, come, come to a conclusion, the two of you. Work it out. And so I think it's a good thing for most marriages to go through some level of coaching, even if you've been married for a period of time. Right. Agreed. Okay. Because it can get old. And, and over time, there are disappointments and there are hurts that happen that aren't discussed. And so it's good when you have that mediator that right. can just come in and then, you know, just just start conversation. Mm-hmm. And it's a safe place. Right. So when we're, t- when we're talking about marriage, and of course there's um, people get married for all kind of reasons. And sometimes they're not the right reasons, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, even in, in, in my field, when I do couples counseling, you know, it's, it's a thing of, well, why are, you, why, are, why are you deciding to make this decision? Why are you deciding to get married? Well, I, I, you know, I love her or I love him. <laughs> and it's just like, okay, she, you she need more than that. She literally laughed at that notion. Yeah, like that. yeah. You need, talk about that. You need more than that, right? <laughs> yeah. you, need, you need more yeah. than that. So... Um, for our listeners, like how do y- how would a person know? How do a couple know that they're ready to take that next move? Because it has to, they have to have more than just um, love, right? You know, um, and do people are people usually in love when they get when they get married? Because I I I I I tend to think that you you, you grow into the to levels of love. You yes. grow into it, right? Um, but then you have people just like, I'm just so in love, and boom, they're, they're getting married. But then, you know, after the honeymoon, that's the reality, right? you know? So can you speak on that a little bit? Um, first of all, being that, you know, that I'm, I'm in love as versus the love thing. Right. Well, that in love, you can get out of love just, right. just as quickly as you got yeah. in love. Mm-hmm. Um, but like you said, you grow. Love is, is something that takes time because love comes with tribulation, trials, challenges. You mm-hmm. know, it's easy to like somebody a whole lot mm-hmm. when there's no challenge, right. Right. when everything is going good. You 
you know, when it's fresh, when it's new. And what's amazing is it can even stay new for years, but the reality is you're still in fantasy, Mm. you know, because you're still dealing with their representative. It's only until that you enter into true covenant with someone that you really are, you really start to see the challenges. Mm. And so at that time, I don't believe, I believe that love comes with maturity. Mm -hmm. I think uh, most people who've been married for an extremely long time, I'm not so sure they would tell you they were ready when they did it. Right. Um, When you're honest, it's like, no, I'm committed. Mm -hmm. I'm committed to this relationship, Mm -hmm. not based on just my feelings, because feelings change. We're in a society where everybody does what they feel. Feel, mm. and you can't live a life like on on feelings. You can't a marriage won't succeed on feelings. Mm-hmm. There are times that I don't like my husband. Really, Eli? <laughs> 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 Who doesn't know you're doing this right now? That's but a kid I work with. He obviously doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> continue, Pastor. <laughs> It takes maturity. It takes being committed to mm-hmm. it. And and so I think that most people need to understand it's not about your feelings. Uh, that's why most marriages are, are struggling, especially those who have lived together first. Mm-hmm. Because it was still a fantasy. Mm. You, you're still perpetrating. You're still meeting their representative. Because it doesn't take you to be committed to live with them first. Mm-hmm. Can you... My thing is, can you be committed not living with them? Right. Mm. right. Can you build a relationship with, with someone where you have to be intentional about seeing them, mm-hmm. about talking to them, as opposed to someone you just getting up from the bed in the morning? Mm-hmm. That's, that's not intentional. You both had to go to sleep last night. Right. <laughs> <laughs> both tired. Yeah, you were both tired. But what happens when, you know, I think about those who had to make a relationship work when you weren't in the same place for a period of time. Mm-hmm. Can you do it then? Or are you only as committed as your attention span? Mm. You know, so I, I just encourage mm. people to take a step back. Whatever you're doing, s- take a step back. Can can you deal with the relationship with that not happening? Mm. That's good. That's good. I think about, do you need that other person to continue to feed you for you to be committed? Right. Right. What if they, because in marriage, what if they can't feed you? You still have to be committed. Yeah. What if he still, what if he can't work? You still have to be committed. What if the sex, Mm. what if, (laughs) if, I was going to say, what if the penis falls off? (laughs) You still got to be committed. Like, hold on. So a little commitment is going on. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no all, that's all, all yeah, truth. All, all truth. Yeah. All th- I think that, so I want to go back to something you said. We were talking about when people get married. I think most people believe they're ready to get married when they get married. Sure. And if you've never mm-hmm. witnessed a, a relationship, a marriage, mm-hmm. a successful one at least, I'll say, um, you think you know, but you, you really have no idea. Mm-hmm. And I used to always ask people, and this is the worst answer in the world to me. So what's it like being married? And and the standard answer is marriage is what you make it. Well, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need some I need something a little bit more concrete than that. Mm-hmm. But it is. <laughs> it is it is what you make it because it will not be anything that you don't invest in. Mm. It won't be what you don't make it. Well, okay, so hearing it from that perspective right there, but when you're 25 and 30 and somebody says that to you, you're like, I would tell I them. I need more. You, <laughs> I would tell them. Marriage is what you make it. It's a commitment. Mm-hmm. It's, it is about the commitment. It is about, you. most people get married, men and, and women, and I will even go so far as to say especially women, they get married for what they think the marriage is going to do for them. Mm. Even if oh. it's making them whole, that is, I it's, agree. It, it, they are, and I'm like, no, seriously, you got to flip that. That's part of the boot camp. Understanding that when you get married, what you're saying is, I give up myself. Mm. 
now. Do you want to <laughs> run down that aisle now? Because you got to give right. up yourself. And so it's about you, your when you get married, the thought should be, <laughs> I'm really ready to commit yeah. to doing whatever I need to, to to make him happy. Or make, not him happy, but to meet his need. I'm willing to do that. I'm willing, whatever that is. And if you both have that attitude, then you're going to always be okay. You'll win. All of you will win. I, you know what? I can't. Oh, I wish I could be there all, a low key. Um, when you say to these women that most women get married because of what it can do for them. A lot of women won't admit that. That's true. You know what I mean? If, you, if you've been a woman who's maybe had financial struggles or you had to raise these kids by yourself, and here comes this man that wants to take care of you and yeah. these, these cheering, mm -hmm. and you struggling, mm -hmm. you'll probably marry him. Mm -hmm. Because you'll be like, damn, somebody really wants to be with me and these yeah. three kids. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I agree with that right there. Mm -hmm. um, wow, that, need th that needs to be said. Yeah. Because um, we need to come into it, I think, like you said, whole with your own everything. Yes. And and then we bring all this all this greatness together. Exactly. I think we always exactly. come in like this. Somebody's up here, somebody's down there. We're never coming in at the same time on the same level. And, and whoever some, you're never going to be totally on the same level. So somebody is right. normally l maybe a little, you know, it mm -hmm. shouldn't be this. Well, emo I want to be more emotionally yeah. uh, you know, comparable. Yeah. I'm not worried about the finances cuz we're going to bring right. that together anyway. Exactly. But emotionally i can't be here and you're down here or vice versa mm -hmm. like that's hard because right. now i gotta make up for everything or she has to make up for everything that i've missed and, and that's too much but to that's, ask of a person but that's because you're not whole right right see and when you're whole you're not you don't have that makeup to do right see? and i you know i was a single woman and with three children when i married you know my husband i'm um, just like over here i'm prophesizing low key <laughs> in reverse though <laughs> but, and but, but carry on. But, but but it's true. It's like the reality is I should even I don't know. I don't knock anybody. I understand what it's like to be single raising children. It's challenging. But you still need to be whole before you get married. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You can still be whole and mm -hmm. get married. I don't care how many kids you, you can be holding it down. How many ha you can yeah. have eight. You holding it down on your own, not needing somebody to come in because what you don't want is the captain save a hoe. Right. You don't want that attitude because w that makes it dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. When anyone in the marriage feels like the other needs them to survive, it will never be functional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, listen. That's real talk. Listen, yes, yes. And, and, and see, it goes back, it goes back because I feel like as, so I'm going to speak from female, as young girls, we, rather it's family, rather it's society, you know, somehow, rather it's church, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's what you're supposed to do. You go to school, you know, graduate, mm -hmm. find your Prince Charming, yep. you know, get married, have a baby, buy a house, you know, all of these things. These are boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. And it's also like a time frame that all mm -hmm. of these, all of these things are supposed to happen. And when it doesn't happen, women feel like they're not they're not fully a woman they're right. not doing they're not walking in what they're yep. supposed to be doing right so it's just like okay now i'm 35 i haven't had a child yet mm -hmm. you know i haven't gotten married and this is what i see coming mm -hmm. into therapy mm -hmm. and they're just like and i'm like you could be working on yourself mm -hmm. like you need to be a hundred percent before you meet the person that you're right. supposed to be with yep. you know um that is really a thing. People, females, I'm going to say more females because that's what I see coming in. They have this thing where I'm I'm not complete unless I have a man or I have a husband. Right. You know, so now we're dealing with that on top of what we talked about earlier, not even knowing our own identity. Right. You know, and now I'm getting married. Now I'm jumping into this marriage because somebody asked me to marry them. Mm -hmm. So I got to say, yes, I'm 35. The clock is ticking. Yep. So I'm in a marriage that really doesn't have a foundation, and I don't know who I am. Right. Right? So if I'm coming into this marriage and I'm not even fully happy with myself, when that person leaves or decides to, you know, do something else, then they're going to take that happiness with them because yes. you relied on them for that. Yeah. And, you you're know? and you're devastated. And you're devastated. And you're sitting there like, what? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, he, he going. Now mm -hmm. what? I, I tell him, okay, so he's gone. Mm -hmm. Now what? Right. 
what you going to do now? Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> life doesn't stop because he's gone. No. You really should be. I tell people all the time, my husband and I are together every day because we choose to. We choose to, yeah. I don't need him. He doesn't need me. Mm -hmm. If he were if he were to be dumb enough to leave tomorrow, <laughs> and, he, and he would be being real dumb. <laughs> but if he left tomorrow, I'm all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd be a little sad. I'd probably be She's a little more a little angry. <laughs> I'd probably be more, at this mm -hmm. point, I'd be more angry than sad. Mm -hmm. And then I'd be like, tripping something must be wrong somebody i'm poisoned it's something, something. <laughs> he's not thinking straight if he right here. right but at, but i'm gonna be okay absolutely yeah. and that's the way it should mm -hmm. be in order for relationships to be healthy we want healthy relationships mm -hmm. no longer we're not back in the day where you know women didn't work and women couldn't make their right. own we're not there anymore so we have to understand we bring we bring mm -hmm. just as much to the table if yeah. not more in some cases. Exactly. Yeah. I yeah. think I think too that that women one thing I think that needs to be a light needs to be signed on the men who need a woman to depend on them. Oh that yes. their mm -hmm. whole existence, their self esteem, yes. their self worth is built around being needed. Yep. Mm -hmm. That dude right there is not ready to be married either. Mm -mm. Um mm -hmm. so it's a lot of broken mm -hmm. men out here for well, whatever they dealt with, daddy issues mommy issues i think that stuff gets glossed over a little bit mm -hmm. and just like we say all the focus is on as long as the wife's happy then it should be okay mm -hmm. um i think it gets glossed over that men have these issues you know too yes, that do. are not because we, we don't talk about it yes they do to the degree that women do but i think women have to be really careful of men with daddy issues and and mommy issues because mm -hmm. he's not he's not ready or or a man who needs to you need to depend on yeah i'll pay your light bill I'll do all these things yeah. for you. Well, see, that's the that's the see that's the thing. So, just like as I was talking about how, you know, uh, women as young girls, mm -hmm. what our supposed the fairy tale dream is supposed to be, it's the same. the The difference between that is the men they level their. They, they I can't even find the words that I'm trying to say. They measure their level of success by being able to provide, mm -hmm. and and in their career, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? So if I'm able to provide for my family, you know, and I have a, you know, my career, I have a, you know, status or whatever, right. that's their level of success. That's it. Those, yes. those two things, right? It doesn't have anything to do with their level of uh, integrity, Not right? their, their faithfulness, yep. their dedication. Those things don't come into play when they deal with their uh, criteria for success. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But, and unfortunately, those two things you mentioned, their career, their level of success, or how much money they have, oftentimes that's enough to get the woman that they want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because of them being, I don't want to say them, women, women being broken or not whole, I'll mm -hmm. say whole. The problem is, though, and I've seen this, and, and, and you got to be careful if you send them to me. <laughs> <laughs> what can happen is if the woman wasn't whole uh -huh. and she becomes whole and he wanted her because she wasn't whole, mm. Mm -hmm. It's not yep. gonna work. She out of there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that. Or he won't be able to deal with her. Right. And then he'll go try to replace because it's all o o always about him being needed. Right. So he'll go find someone else to need him. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So let's 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 move towards. And I I know we're like Bruce, <laughs> this show done went by so quick. Let's move towards. The relationship where the woman mm -hmm. may be more successful mm -hmm. than the man, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And and we're that. and we're now we're we're now talking about the level of wanting to be needed, right? You know, the man wanting to be needed. Um, so because you see that as well, men tend to they maybe initially they wanted that type of woman or they felt they could handle that type of woman, but what happens when it's just like okay. Maybe this is not for me. Maybe this is not the situation for me because that woman's level of success and them knowing that that woman actually really don't need them, but she still wants to be in a relationship and still have the marriage and all of that. Men tend to, do, men, some men do check out. Well, see, that's where being a wife is very challenging mm -hmm. because then she has to then speak 
to that which is in him. And she has to coddle that which is in him Mm -hmm. so that he understands that he is still needed, even if it's a choice. It's just kind of, it's kind of like, I need you, baby. Mm -hmm. It's a choice, though. Mm -hmm. But I do need you. But I do need you. But you don't say the choice part, do you? (laughs) (laughs) In your head, you do. In your head, yeah. (laughs) I was about to say, well, what? (laughs) Right. And and, 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 and let me say this, that old wife, part of what she does is cultivating him. Mm -hmm. So wherever he is, if she's truly being the wife, she will cultivate what's on the inside of him. He won't stay the same. Mm -hmm. But he won't think that he he's being challenged. Mm-hmm. He he doesn't have to think that he's being made less than either. Right. It, it takes a special woman to do that, but it can be. That's yeah. a skill. He to still be, needs to, to feel like what the it man. Is. Every it's woman right. can't yeah. do that. It's yeah. You can't make fifty thousand dollars more than your man and still make him feel like he's a man. Every woman can't do that. Mm-hmm. You come to my boot camp, you can. Mm-hmm. All right. Because, but that. But that is really about spirituality. That is really about what the Bible says. That's really about, because really, in the kingdom, money doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Right. If, if you two, because the reality is, if you two both have nothing, you, sh- you two should be creating an environment for each other to be cultivated to come to another level. Mm. Bishop was just talking about that on Sunday, about that cultivating. You need to be intentional about the environments that you set yourself in so that it will cultivate what God has already placed in on the inside of you. My job is to create an atmosphere in my home where whoever is there will go to another level because they are there. Mm. Wow. I got to come over to your house. <laughs> <laughs> Stay for a week. Where you live at? <laughs> <laughs> Name of your development. <laughs> How's this park outside on your street or something? <laughs> Very good. That's good stuff. Yeah. We yeah. got to have you on. Why, why, how come she only come on twice a year? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to. I'm just saying. Ask if we if she can come to our rebirth live. Oh, okay. The okay. second one. I think yeah. You, I if think she, if she has that date available, okay. that'll be great. If you that. don't, we'll change the date. That's November nah. 5th. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> November 5th. Okay. Yeah, I would love to have you on the um on the panel. Um, you know, I I because this is needed, and this is what we talk. Th- we're talk we talk about love, mm-hmm. love, lust, and relationship is the name of it. And um, I like to have the different perspectives, mm-hmm. you know, male and female perspective, and give give people different, mm-hmm. you know, a different way of thinking and looking at things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I do think that. It's very challenging today. You have a lot of women that's just like, no, I'm the submit. What? Nope. You have people that's taking it out yeah. their vows. Like, we're, I'm not saying that, yes. you know. And wow. then it's just like, well, what? Ha- and, and then and and then here we go because it's like you also have a lot of men that leave the home and mothers are raising children by themselves. Yeah. So and usually this this is the woman that turns out to feel like. She was abandoned emotionally. Mm-hmm. Now I got, now I gotta, you know, I have to pr- provide and do all of this stuff on my own. Mm-hmm. And now, if I'm out there trying to date, you're intimidated because you f- you look at me and say, "Well, you're too strong." Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's like, and I hear this. These are the stories. Well, I don't know what to be. I don't know how to be because, you know. The father of my children left the home, so I had to be strong. I had to be, right. you know, in control. I had to do these things. But now if I'm trying to meet somebody else, then that's a you're holding that against me, mm-hmm. you know. Right. You understand what I'm saying? I you have a lot of women that are struggling with that, you know. And it's not only are you trying to learn how to trust again and, and again, find your own identity and all mm-hmm. of that, but at the same time, you – are being looked at as, you know, well, for black women, we always have that angry black woman. Right. You right. know, or, oh, you too, you know, you too self-sufficient, can't nobody help you, you know. So I, I think that, I mean, wh- what would you say to those women, you know, that's dealing with that? The problem is that we, I, I say this a lot, we want spiritual results without living a spiritual life. Mm-hmm. The reality is that if you, conduct yourself by the criteria that the word says, then no matter how strong you are, you will submit when it's time. Mm. And so if a man 
handles himself according to the same criteria, mm -hmm. he will understand that you you will submit when it's time. If he sees you strong and you're still not his wife, that's the way he's supposed to see you. Mm -hmm. Because why should you sit? You, you don't submit to somebody who's not your husband. Right. What, what part of right. that? Right. <laughs> right. You want me to submit? Yeah. Then I need to be your wife. Absolutely. The problem is he wants all the benefits mm -hmm. without without the responsibility. Mm -hmm. So it's like no. And if we're both living this life then you'll see that. You'll yeah. see it lived out. Because a person who submits doesn't just submit to her husband. She submits to principles. Mm -hmm. She will submit to right. So it's about are you coming in right? Right. You want her to be strong. You want her to be able to hold it down. God for what happens if something happens to you? Mm -hmm. You're supposed to fall apart because something happened to you? Right, right. No. You can't turn it on and off when it's convenient for you. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I want you to think. I want you to be smart. I just don't want you to be smarter than me. Right. Yeah, that's whack. <laughs> yeah. That's whack. It's whack. But yeah. it, w it will reveal it. Just give it time. Yeah. Wow, this is this is good, and it's <laughs> – can't believe what's that. a couple's joint hour went by so <laughs> quick yeah because you need to register for that too <laughs> yes, no i'm only joking <laughs> <laughs> the couple's joint is um what is, when is it marriages that win it is october uh, mm -mm -mm. October, let me pull well we up. can focus on one thing yeah, at a time you can come back and talk about that yes, we're we gonna get this ticket can. right here cracking yes. the day though yes <laughs> the boot camp you definitely want to mm -hmm. register it is going to be phenomenal we are going to it's going to be raw relevant real we're going to discuss some things we're going to put things out on the table mm -hmm. and i'm telling you it, it's 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 phenomenal and when okay so they can get the ticket at eventbrite.com yes. or go to our transformation website. No, oh, transform my faith. By faith dot live. Okay, Can transform by faith yes. Yes. dot live. Yes. We got to, I got to have you on here more often because I've never seen Eli act like this. <laughs> I mean, he be engaged, but he like really engaged. <laughs> 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 listen, if you got something to say, I can take something away from him. I'm going to listen. <laughs> if you're there talking that foolishness, I might be over him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I do have one last question and we'll, we'll wrap up. Um, why? Why? Why do you? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing the marriages as wins? Why are you doing the whys? Like, why are you investing your time in doing this now? Um, I think when I look back, when I first got married, I wasn't whole. Mm -hmm. And being married to a narcissist cool. has almost destroyed me. Mm -hmm. And so I started that journey of healing while being married to a narcissist, which mm -hmm. uh, that can be very challenging. That sounds tough. And I, I just, when I got the victory, when I got to that place, it took me back to the scripture that said that Satan desired to sift you as wheat. He desired to kill you. And when I look at it, had I not gone on this journey of getting to know who I was and healing, I would have killed myself. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want any woman to have that experience. I know that a ma my marriage is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And the narcissist is no longer a narcissist. <laughs> mm. And that in and of itself is a miracle. Mm -hmm. But, you know, to get to this place, I have to share it. There are so many women who feel like what they've gone through, it can never be good. What mistakes they made? Yeah, you made the mistake of marrying him. It can be good. Mm. And so I'm here to encourage them. Mm -hmm. I'm here to say it can be what you want it to be. You just got to invest. You've got to be all in. Yeah. And I know one of the things you used to always say, um, <laughs> well, I still end up divorcing, but... <laughs> <laughs> One thing you used to <laughs> used to say was, "Don't worry, <laughs> don't worry about how it looks. Don't how like, don't worry about how it looks. You just gotta, you know, stay focused on, you know, your own healing. Don't worry about how it looks." And it it, it was that was very challenging for me to do that for a period of time. To not because worry it about was how it looks. Yeah, like no, don't look at the situation <laughs> or what's going on because 
one so she would always say to me it's the same so it was just back to back stuff that was going on and she would always say it's the same event it's one event it's one event mm -hmm. i'm like <laughs> all right nut i'll talk to you later <laughs> <laughs> that's my nickname that's our nickname for each other i'm like all right now i'll talk to you later but i wasn't ready mm -hmm. so once i became ready and i start listening and i replayed it and i listened and listened um i started focusing in on me and the more i focused in on me i realized that this was not where i'm supposed to be at mm -hmm. so i was able to make the choice that i need to make for myself right. um because you know i mean i think that even with getting married that we may think we married the right person or the person that we're supposed to be with, and that's not always true. No, nope, but he can become the right one. He, he can if he wants, wants to, to if he yeah. wants to. That's right. And, and it, you know, that has yeah, to be there. That's a whole other conversation, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah, I, I had a coming, but never mind. <laughs> it, it has to. <laughs> so I know we're wrapping up. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so once again, guys, you know, if you would like to, um, you know, come to this event, definitely get your tickets and uh, make sure you, you know, you register. If you want to see your wife or your girlfriend, <laughs> you <laughs> send them. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> you definitely. Yeah. Is there a cutoff in regards to registration? September 20th is my cutoff. Okay, yeah. September 20th. All right. So September 24th, Wives That Win presents the boot camp. Yes. And this is for single and married ladies so make sure you guys be there i think i'm gonna come awesome. yeah i it's think i'm gonna try to make that good. um to come out and support and so let me give a quick shout out to everybody that's listening naisha, naisha jenkins, jenkins. Naisha. She been on naisha it. Yeah. said october 22nd is marriage that wins that's, that's <laughs> yes. a, okay that's a yes. the couple's joint yes. Yes. yeah all right <laughs> yes 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 so shout out to jerry flowers Thank you guys for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Shout out to my mom. Right, and um, and happy Eileen. belated birthday to my mother and to my, to happy my son. Happy birthday, yeah. Miss Eileen. Mom, happy, happy belated. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Oh, and Aunt Tanette was on listening. Netta. <laughs> hey, Netta. <laughs> yes. yes. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in tonight. Um, would you like to have any last minute words or comments? Last minute comment would be, don't give up, don't mm -hmm. quit. Quitting, mm -hmm. quitting is easy. It if is. If you quit this time, you'll quit on some other things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to decide you're going to stick in it and make it what it needs to be. Mm -hmm. It's easy to walk away. That's what society has us doing, walking away from mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. But anything good is worth fighting for. Yeah. And so sometimes you just need to put yourself in an environment like the boot camp that will encourage you to keep mm -hmm. fighting. Mm -hmm. That's good. That is good. That's okay. good. I yeah. feel like I got a lot tonight. Yeah. In a moment where I felt like I might have needed it. Yeah. yeah. So thank you. Walking away is very easy. It is. It is. It's very easy. But then, you know, sometimes there's some stuff you, <laughs> <laughs> there's some situations you got to walk away from. <laughs> Because your destiny is not tied to that. So, mm -hmm. and you have to um, pray and ask God for discernment for that. Yes. <laughs> oh boy, you slid that yes, in real quick, yes. Andy. Shout out to Shonda. <laughs> hey, boo. I hope you're feeling better. Thank you for tuning in tonight. So, guys, we appreciate you guys for tuning in. We are here every Monday at 7 p.m. Pastor Teresa, you know, I love you, girl. I love you. I love too. you, girl. I love you so, guys um, both yeah. Both. Thank but you. But I do love Shay a whole lot more. <laughs> As you should. <laughs> However, <laughs> another show or two, you're going to be like, you know what, Eli, you my guy. You my guy. Oh, Nut over here, she cool, but you my guy. It's all right. I'm working my way in. It's all good. All right. It's all good. <laughs> so we are excited because we have another Rebirth Live. <laughs> Volume 2. I got to do the sound That is, too. you know, that is going to be coming November 5th at Revive Venue on Philadelphia <laughs> Pike. Guys, I mean, we sold out the first Rebirth Live. We had Man. a great time. And, you know, you if you haven't, if you didn't come to the first one, make sure you get your tickets. It's on Eventbrite. You want to go to Rebirth Live, the number 2.eventbrite.com. 
and Eli and myself, we're going to be holding it down, and that's November 5th from 6 to 10 p.m. It's Love, Lust, and Relationships, Volume 2, A Male and Female Perspective. They make fun of the way I say volume. But, that, but that's okay. It's all good. It's, it's that violent. <laughs> that's the west side of violent. It's it? all good. <laughs> so, again, thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight. We appreciate you. We do not take you for granted. Thank yes. you so much for your support. We love you. Pastor Delisa, thank you so thank much. You, thank you so much. Make sure you guys get your tickets. I'm yes. telling you, she is the truth, and you will walk away with something and, and probably changed after um, yes. spending I some time with her. I feel for this last with Praise hours. God. Amen. Because <laughs> you, you know what? <laughs> I'm just playing, Lord. You know my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Again, thank you for tuning in. You guys have a blessed night.